Hello and welcome to the Armenian News Network Grung Week in Review. This is the last show we're recording this year and today is December 27th, 2021. I'm Asmet Bedrosian, and together with Hovig Manucharyan, we're going to be talking about the following major topics. Nigol Pashinyan held a press conference, Robert Kocharyan held a press conference, and the Yerevan mayor saga. And to talk about these issues, we have with us Tevan Pogosian, who is president of the International Center for Human Development. Mr. Pogosian was an MP in the National Assembly between 2012 and 2017 from the Heritage Party. From 1997 to 1999, he served as the Nagorno-Karabakh Public Affairs Office Director in Washington, D.C. Hello and welcome back, Tevan. Hello, Tevan. Uh, Hello, everyone. Well, let's begin with the most talked about event last week. On Friday, Nikol Pashinyan held a press conference lasting more than two hours, answering pre-selected questions from media. Uh, the press conference touched upon many topics, including Turkish-Armenian relations and the ongoing uh, negotiations around Artsakh. One statement, uh, however, created the most political storm, including for the Artsakh parliament to issue a rare statement condemning a sitting leader, leader in Armenia. And this was around the status of Artsakh. Uh, when asked around his stance on the future of Artsakh, Pashinyan said that in 2016, there was a catastrophe in the negotiations process where the explicit interim status for Artsakh text was missing uh, when compared with previous versions of the proposals. And of course, these are proposals from the OSC Minsk Group mediators. And this started happening in 2016. He Additionally, on top of this, he uh, accused Sir Sarkisian of agreeing to allow the UN Security Council to determine the final status of Artsakh. Essentially, uh, he thought that that would constrain the final solution of the conflict to be within the borders of Azerbaijan. Uh, he claimed that this was due to the fact that the UN Security Council previously recognized Artsakh as part of the uh, as part of Azerbaijan uh, in a 1993 resolution. And I should say that you know this is you know his own interpretation. So I wanted to ask Tevan, you know, where how close do you think this assessment is to reality? And what's your overall assessment of the Pashinyan uh, press conference itself? First of all, I think Pashinyan's press conference hasn't been devoted to the issue of Karabakh and Karabakh issues, Karabakh negotiations. It has been totally about different story. All the arguments that he used, it has been figuring out by him or by his team on a point of view how to make acquisitions about the past and how to clean up the blame from himself. Because, you know, if you learn about this everything in, okay, like May 9, you prime minister, uh, 2018. On May 10, the, uh, on May 9, he was in Karabakh with taking it out. On May 11, some documents has been put it on your table. Then what are you have been all busy till November 9, 2024. And this is coming to the point over which I think it has been just simple attempts to, again, uh, try to figure out a new uh, point over uh, how to escape the blame, how to put the whole blame on others. And this is for the internal issues or uh, local here. And the most important over which I have the most fear that he is just trying to please Azerbaijan and Turkey on their agenda. And this was the point over which he has been presenting that see like I'm opening up such discussions there. Let's agree there on everything. Uh, as much as possible that we can go fast with coming to sign some deals about opening the borders, trade, and blah, 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 which in my view also very much all about his policy of kicking Russia out of the region. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but this is sounds like both Aliyev and Pashinyan are playing the same game on bringing up the new realities over which both of them could refer that Russia, there is no need anymore to you be present in the region. 
why I'm saying all this is this because the situation is seems like following. Yeah, see, if you know about everything like that, then why you have been running for being uh, or winning elections again in uh, December 2018? If this was the whole situation, if everything was screwed up, why you are not say any word about such difficult situation still back in December 2018 parliamentary elections? Then why in 2019 you have been saying that Artsakh is Armenia in Stepan Maker? And uh, why in all that cases when you know that there is a very, 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 very difficult situation and the only way to deal or to fight the difficult situation is national unity, why you are not make any attempt to bring up the unification of the all Armenian nations all over the world towards one issue, why you are not raised an issue with American Armenians. Right. We have the elections in America before this. Why you are haven't been uh, trying to raise these issues there and asking, please, diasporans, ask the all candidates for changing this situation. Why you haven't been asking them to raise these questions in the U.S. Congress trying to influence the meeting? Why you haven't been uh, raising issues in the European parts trying to put pressure on the French co-chair trying to bring the new changes there? And why you haven't been trying to consolidate the Russian diasporans on bringing the influence over the situation and trying to raise issue in the Russia for not supporting Azerbaijani positions, but supporting Armenian positions. The last point over this, that uh, all of this is just to say that, guys, we have such bad things I have been trying to overcome, but it seems like, you know, the following, I've been considering me so important that I can overcome this alone without forgetting that states are not compared to one personality and uh, nations should be unified for any joint position to go on. That's why I think all this are now is artificially figured out how to put the blame on others and how to clean up the blame for myself. Nothing in reality, but unfortunately, all that words, all the statements that he used during this last year has been perfectly utilized by our enemies from Azerbaijan and Turkey for anchoring and enforcing their own positions. Like if you're starting to say Artsakh is Armenia and then saying, you know, on the east of the Tog village is Azerbaijan, who would be you utilizing this? If you will be making this statement, and this is not the first time, first his attempt was in November before the meeting in Sochi. And again, it's raised the big issues. And I do believe that all this argumentation has been used by Aliyev in a much better way than uh, we ever can support uh, to our enemy. And now is the second point over which seems like someone has promised him that, guys, we will deal with some issue of status, but agree that that status should be within Azerbaijan. And because of that, we will give you some cultural level of the status or something like this. Raise a few times that issues, and in a two months' time, for example, Azerbaijan was says, it's okay, let's uh, devote to Armenians in Artsakh and cultural status. Uh, then uh, he would say that, see, like, I promised the status, I done the status. I think yeah. it's something like the sum, this kind of, but who could be the country who uh, give him some hope for the, any of this is the only Azerbaijan. And I think yeah. the meeting in Brussels, uh, his personal discussion doesn't matter how he has been many times saying that, you know, we have been alone staying there and we just continue the same discussion. 
it hasn't been just simply like that. And I think uh, Aliyev trying to, again, play the diplomatic game, promise him some kind of a, this uh, type of issues. And I think he has been childly losing on this point. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm very glad that, for example, at least after the whole this past year, Karabakh authority or Karabakh all political uh, system has been raised the, its voice. I'm very glad that in Armenia, many political parties and many political people start to raise their voices against this and just simply even common citizens. I hope that uh, this would generate at least some understanding of tensions. I, I don't believe that maybe we would be able to waking up about one and a half million people who voted or not participated in election, trying to serve better for the nation and turn into the political agenda uh, Karabakh issue again. But I hope that at least this will be some first attempts over which there'll be some changes in the acceptance of the uh, by the public that guys such way of running statehoodness would even take us only to the loss of statehoodness. So uh, you did talk about uh, a few things that I wanted to actually sort of ask for a follow-up. We've talked previously ab- about demands from Turkey in terms of opening negotiations or in opening relations. And I guess one statement that Turkey has always made is that this has to be agreed with authorities in uh, Azerbaijan. So you believe you see a, a link between Pashinyan's statements and essentially trying to meet this demand from Turkey in order to open relations with the country? Yeah, definitely. Uh, mm-hmm. Not only that demand. I think he's step by step going with the old demands. Right. Uh, you know, the we perfectly all nations has been knowing the, during this past 30 years about the Turkish demands. It has been always like about genocide. Forget about these genocide issues. Accept our territorial integrity and border issues. Kind of uh, endorse the Karsak uh, agreement so one more time or something like this. And uh, uh, third point, guys, you need to be able not to kind of uh, allow diaspora influence your positions on many issues. Trying to say that all our relationship is about state to state and not about the nation. And in, within this context, it always has been the, one of the greatest points that proved by the uh, all uh, all issues giving up on Karabakh. Even if the previously Turkey has been saying like the same uh, David Oglu, I remember, on the one of the personal close meetings over which I've been also part of, says that if you will give up even on the two regions, we would make Azerbaijan now try not to create uh, problems with the opening up Armenian and Turkish border and establishing diplomatic relationship, uh, which would help you, blah, blah, blah. It has been like kind of a preconditions towards the protocol policy time. Okay. Even in the previous years, they always been saying that we close your border because of the Karvachar liberation operation. You need to give it up and so on. And so I, Turkish has been always speaking with Armenia on preconditions. Armenia right, right. has been always saying that uh, no relationship with any preconditions, but the whole issues and discussions has been in a way that, guys, you are not uh, really engaging into the uh, our own issues like Armenia diaspora issues. Like. Tevan, one more question. This is the first time that he essentially interpreted the UN Security Council resolution in 1993 as the UN or the UN Security Council recognizing uh, Artsakh within Azerbaijan's border. Is that even technically correct, in your opinion? Uh, first of all, not. There is thousands of the resolutions in the UN talking about uh, Kosovo and Yugoslavia. Is Kosovo now an independent country? Uh, like, you can have a thousand of UN resolutions. They just put in sometimes descriptive points. But let's not forget that after the old resolutions accepted, UN has sent its mandate to Minsk co-chairs to deal with these issues, saying that you are the right format. And whatever would be coming from the Minsk co-chairs as a proposals would be accepted by the UN. 
You said UN resolutions has been totally about differentiation, about stopping military activities of the time. And if you're taking, there are so many pro-Armenian points in these resolutions, over which unfortunately Armenian diplomatic system only few times put its references. Okay. But for example, even all these UN resolutions has very interesting clue, saying that Azerbaijan should stop immediate all military actions, then try, uh, the discussions is there about local Armenian forces, talking about Nagorno-Karabakh, and even if they're saying Nagorno-Karabakh, they're using as a separate point. Mm -hmm. And after the delivering the mandate uh, from UN to OSC to Minsk co-chairs, there has been so many decisions there about how many sites of conflicts exist. And Nagorno-Karabakh accepted as a side of conflict and not something else. Pevan, yeah. I have a question about Arai Karutunian's statement yeah, yeah. after the press conference. Do you think that was a break with Pashinyan or do you think that was meant for uh, internal domestic consumption? Uh, no, I think it has been just for defending his position because it's, it's uh, internally perfectly they know that in, the people in Karabakh and the political parties in Karabakh has been so badly accepted all these decisions that even Ari Karchunian perfectly understand that it has been a very, very problematic issue for him not to make a, any move, any right. action. Right. And if you're even taking, there are so, uh, so some internal issues in Karabakh going on, or which uh, I think Arkunian is also understood that this could uh, really be against his, I want to say the personality point, but also to not remain in the history as one who bring to the loose of subjectiveness of, Absolutely. Of, of, of this, because this is now on its own shoulder. But then you think you think he is actually starting to break policy-wise from Nikol Pashinyan. Uh, Even if it is on a personal basis, then he is breaking with the policy of just following whatever Armenia says to uh, looking out after the interests of his country. Yeah, uh, let, let's uh, let's see if it would continue as a because the policy is a yeah. process and it's not one-time action. Okay. Now, if I would see that something in January, then in February. There will be a serious uh, continuation of the policy. I would say that, that this is policy. And for me, one of the signs would be how the Karabakh, public of Artsakh, would be really, I would say celebrating, but at least... Marking, marking the move. Marking. What kind of right. a marking it would be on Feb from February 13 to February 18, uh, which is, has been about the Karabakh movement. Yeah. Uh, so the uh, first... Uh, about or 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 it has it's from eighty eight, it would be the thirty fourth uh, anniversary. Yeah, for mm -hmm. this. Let's see if the policy would be that in January, for example, we will see that, for example, Karab Artsakh Parliament would initiate uh, a law on Azerbaijani occupation of Artsakh ter Republic territories when the new uh, legal situation would be accepted. When, what kind of a role would be, how many times would be changed the policy that whenever people would be visiting Artsakh, uh, Artsakh president would be meeting with them, accepting them or coming to Armenia, meeting with various political parties, then we can say that this is a policy. Maybe we can go to another point he raised, which again is sort of kind of shocking, but another one of the questions during the press conference focused on occupied territories of the former uh, NKAO, for example, Shushi and Hadrut. They asked him whether he, you know, what's his stance on that. And he basically, you know, mentioned a few points. He said that um, NKAO was never under any uh, negotiation viewed as exclusively an Armenian bloc. Uh, and he said that even if Armenians of NKAO got to do a referendum on cessation, and as, even assuming that Armenians do secede from Azerbaijan, what to do with Azerbaijanis who live in NKO and do they get a right to secede? Uh, and I believe, you know, basically he was he was trying to say that if just the region of Shushi decided to secede, you know, what what their rights would be. In 1989, as you know, the population of Shushi was predominantly Azerbaijani due to the anti-Armenian massacres that took place there in 1918. Was he trying to? temper our expectations in terms of Armenia 
uh, pushing for the occupation of maybe even Shushi or some other regions right now under Azerbaijani control. Like Hadrut. Uh, but at least in the Hadrut case, I know that sort of logic, this logic wouldn't work because Hadrut was mostly Armenian. Mm -hmm. I, I think he was trying to make a point about Shushi itself. I see. Uh, once again, it's a nice argumentation trying to prove the policy, which is coming maybe only from the uh, Azerbaijani side or something. Guys, no revanchism. Guys, no dream about any move that any Azerbaijani soldiers will move from any point. This is the po overall policy of the European Union. But guys, accept the results and just uh, live with this. Something like that. But the most funny point is that, guys, uh, Karabakh Declaration of Independence, Artsakh Declaration, Artsakh process of referendum, much stronger than Azerbaijan. How about the uh, 500,000 Ar Armenians living in uh, Azerbaijan? Mm -hmm. Then, uh, and the population at that time was 6 million. And this is making it like one tenth. I mean, what about Azerbaijan? Is it only Azerbaijan country? There was about from 300,000, 400,000 Azerbaijanis in Armenia. They left by uh, 91 September 21st. What about them? Is it Armenia also partly Azerbaijani state? Like, what the difference making this? Where they have been living? Vartanis region has been uh, at the time. Uh, really uh, heavily populated with Azerbaijan. I only remember that kind of an argument that ever has been used. It has been used by Ilham Ariyev, not even right. by his father, who has been always saying, we would never allow a second Armenian state. If, you, if this would happen, then imagine Armenians in Glendale can say that we are asking for independence. Now, what he meaning about this, like that? He is accepting this logic and saying that Azerbaijan is some uh, about 8,000 Azerbaijanis who has been living by nine, uh, 1990 in Shushi, who said that we are declaring our independence. Why Nagorno Karabakh Republic accepted the declaration and went for the referendum? Because they have this right based on the Soviet Union constitution. Mm -hmm then they utilize these rights. What is the problem with utilizing the rights? And second, the most important point, that is forgetting that all the Azerbaijani population of Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Oblast at this period has been still in Nagorno-Karabakh. Population of Shushi was there on the day of referendum, on December 10th. Mm -hmm. But the referendum has been taking place on the whole territory of Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Oblast and Shamia region. Mm -hmm. And the results, everyone knows. Then do Pashinyan believe to democracy that rule of majority should rule at the referendums? Yes. Whenever you need to explain that, you know, the problem is dinosaurs. You're always trying to find out some dinosaurs and say that my old problem is dinosaurs. His problem has been all militaries, then previous guys, then I don't know today's guys, then the public apparatus, then bureaucracy, then I don't know this, then I this, then I this, then I this, then I this. And now see the problem is, has been in the papers, which has been overcome uh, by many, many discussions. I think OSC co-chairs has been even more amazed by statements of December 24 than even whole Armenian nation. By, by the way, yeah, I think one, one very important issue over which we forget is this Armenian-Turkish relationship and so on. You know, the problem is not only that Armenia and Turkey as a state should uh, sooner or later find out the way to establish a relationship or the process should go, maybe 100 years or something like this. I don't know, but somewhere. But the most important that, that during the process, we done 30 years of experience, and there is a positive and negative points. One of the things are, are negative ones has been that during a protocols that Armenia has kind of accepted some issues and only after that they decided to go to diaspora and discuss these issues. 
And I think we all perfectly knows what was the rea uh, re reactions of diaspora. We have even worse situation now because whenever you've done a mistake, you're learning. I didn't see the process then diaspora is raising its voice and saying that guys who are allowing you to normalize the relationship on my sake or right. establish your diplomatic relations, open it up, but never go with the relationship over which you forgetting my issue. There have been voices from the diaspora. I didn't see the power of that voices. Yeah, I think that the issue is not that nobody has spoken up. There have been some voices from no, the no, diaspora, no, I... but the relationship is so bad between the Republic and the diaspora that there's a disconnect there. In... Yeah, that, that's still like another point of Turkey or another precondition of Turkey is fulfilled. Armenia and diaspora are cut it from each other. Serdar Kılıç, the, the Turkish envoy, he's been Turkey's ambassador to the U.S., very prominently anti-Armenian. Yeah, if you really want to sort of, you know, not burn your bridges to the diaspora, why not publicly make a statement about that? Even if you allow the, the talks to continue, but say that we are, you know, we condemn this type of, this type of behavior. In, in what way, Hovig? What do you mean? Uh, how would they protest? Uh, aspect, uh, I wouldn't say even going with the prospect, but with the demand. And at least, you know, what what should be the real process? I think the, I'm not a, uh, there's for me, there's no difference under the Pashinyan rule who is appointed as chief negotiator or something like this. I don't know even how the special representative there. The, I can go with only personal details and uh, I understand what kind of a process should be and would this a person able to do that? But at least the first issue should be like, guys, because this is uh, not simply uh, between Armenia as an Armenia as a state, which is a cosmopolitan meaning which called someone Armenia, but we have a national issue and we are a political nation then at least uh, our representative should travel to all the aspirant uh, kind of a major uh, places and at least uh, prepare an agenda of issues which are uh, at uh, these people interest. It could take months, it could take two, but at least I don't know. I need to first go to the diasporans, collect their issues. Second, to come up and meet with the old people who has been previously engaged in these processes, with the foreign ministers of all three administrations, with the all uh, presidents, to understand the positive, negative, and mistakes on this part. And only after that, we are uh, would be ready to come up and that what kind of an agenda is there. And this point, like if you agree to talk, then what's mean, uh, let's discuss without precondition. Because precondition is not the one-sided. Yeah, and and because you already raised your preconditions, then there is a list of mine preconditions. If the process is not put it correctly, doesn't mean how brilliant negotiator you could be. The process is equally important than content. Okay, before moving on, do you have any other major uh, comments on uh, the Pashinyan's press conference that we didn't talk about? Uh, oh, okay. in reality, I said that uh, once again, this press conference this has been about totally different issues than about the Karabakh. Because the issue with Karabakh, it seems like uh, they give up very, very uh, too much previously. And I think the processes here is like serving our Azerbaijan agenda on kicking Russia out of the region. Uh, mm -hmm. At least for them, it's like much more helping. That's much more help to uh, Aliyev how to take uh, Russia out and uh, even uh, worse situation. Uh, okay. th this is my view because uh, you never would be hitting, it's like it's, it's, it's never even understand it, why you hitting uh, your Armenian interest or at least interest of Artsakh. You can't hate so much. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. uh, uh, it's, it's, I cannot explain the level. Like even some Azerbaijani experts would not be so uh, painful to Artsakh than uh, the, this was. That's why I think it's it's much more about totally different issues than simply Artsakh issues. 
Today is Monday, and earlier today, the leader of the Ayastan Alliance in Parliament, the opposition, the main opposition group, uh, Robert Kocharyan, held a press conference summarizing the year from his point of view. Many of the points he raised, we talk about specifically security situation on the border. This issue about uh, Artsakh status was was touched upon. One question that they posed to him, and I wanted to get your opinion, is the following. So Kocharyan mentioned that. Demarcation and delimitation is a process that Armenia should not go into. And he said that basically he would not have committed Armenia to it. And the question to him posed to him was, would, wouldn't that mean then more conflict on the borders because of ambiguity? Basically said that the, the other alternative to demarcation and delimitation is not to do it. And Armenia has all the rights to refuse to go through that process. Do you agree with his hard line stance on that issue. Even the first time when they used this terminology, I said that this is a wrong policy about demarcation area because for me, it's uh, not the border. For me, it's security. Mm-hmm. And security of not today, but security of our upcoming generations and future. Whenever you would having any signed document, you would be cutting their rights for the future possibilities. Now, one of the best cases is about, again, unfortunately, but I need to use it. It's how our enemies done back in 1994. Let's try to even get the small situation of how Azerbaijani guy would feel in Baku about the May 12 ceasefire. And because May, November 9, for me, is a ceasefire document, I'm treating with the same point. For him, it has been like, for that other guy in Baku sitting, it has been like, wow, Armenian military entered our territory for deeper than 100 kilometers and stopped there. Would Azeris give up on demarcation, delimitation? I don't know, many some others. Okay, well, if I'm now going with something like this, then it's meaning that, guys, you even depriving uh, your upcoming generations from the all, all possible security guarantees. And world security, can I, uh, uh, I'm really sorry, is not just simply shooting. It's the whole complex of issues. Security for having food security, security for being able to provide energy security, security for environmental issues, security for many, many things. You can simply say that, okay, let's do the demarcation. This is your border. But how about the water? If you give the whole water springs to Azerbaijan, how you'll be securing you with the one of the most important resources of future? Is it not oil? It's coming water. It's not many, many other issues, but environment. Where is the food security issues? Where is the many, many, many other issues? And second, even if the some demarcations would be discussed, who is that power would be coming and telling to Azerbaijan, guys, you are a bit deeper from your point. You need to go back for three or four kilometers. I don't know. And I don't believe that it would be US or EU or even Russia. There is only one force could make really different its uh, own border and it's Armenian soldier. Okay. Again, the war, why then I am putting some line? If we perfectly know that there's still possibilities and there still would be the situation when you need to uh, be able to defend your own self. Why are you putting you some limits? Why are you putting you in a situation when your security of Yerevan is becoming much more vulnerable than you, you would be able to produce? It's like we're talking like we would dream that 2015, 5 million Armenians would be living in Armenia. Because how you would be defending that 5 million Armenians in Armenia? With being like what, one city? Are we talking about that the dream of today's government is to build up a Singapore city state and that's all in Yerevan? Uh, this is the point over which whenever you're talking about demarcation delimitations, you need to also understand the consequences. Yeah, I do believe that even if tomorrow 
the borders of which are on the maps uh, of 1926. Even if with some uh, magic stick, Azerbaijan would say that, okay, I'm accepting this uh, map and I'm going back. The next sentence from Azerbaijan would be, guys, show me the territory where Azerbaijani Manat is operating. If not, then why should be their part in my territories where Armenian drum is operating? Right. Why it's about Armenian passports? Why it should be Armenian educational system operating? Why it should be Armenian car plates operating? And why in so, so many ways? Yes, or just to say that we are giving up on Artsakh on all the possibilities and taking out all the rights of our upcoming generations. And then go with your demarcation or delimitations or something like this. But then I said that you perfectly should know that that process finally de demands the signature. If you're going with putting signature under any document, then 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 you are done. Uh, right. then Especially forget. when a gun is pointed to your head. Yeah, that that's why the, the whole process is, is wrong. So like uh, terminology, discussions or something like this is totally one different point. You can go with the tactical on saying, like, let's say the negotiation, I will do like this and blah, blah, blah. But if you are not even able to say that which maps you would be using, then what will what you are talking? Right. But like you, you did, why normal states, two neighbor normal states, starting the process of demarcation and delimitations, only establishing diplomatic relationship, only establishing after the whole long way of cooperation, and only after so many things. Yeah. Because this is a, just one of the first and small issues to initiate and trigger confrontations. Now, are we in a peace to say that we have a limit of some small confrontations? Armenia and Georgia don't have the conflict. But okay. anytime this process taking 30 years and anytime with any village is taking so many long. And just let me remind you that during these 30 years, there was at least four times when sometimes in the news, you can even Google and found that Georgians border guards entered this Armenian village or put some uh, stop stuff and something like this. Now, we, we didn't resolve our conflicts. We have so many issues and we bringing up another conflicting uh, points to the table. This is how we would be coming to the peace. I don't know, that's why I'm saying that, guys. Uh, maybe for United States, EU and Russia, we finding a very nice long engagement issue. Okay. But I don't think that it would be anything positive for Armenia. Now, if I'm talking from Armenians' interest, this is not the right process. Okay, thank you, Helen. Uh, let's talk about local politics. Uh, throughout 2021, there have been on and off reports in the media that Maistep uh, and the Yerevan mayor, Haik Marutian, parted ways after the war. Uh, these were consistently denied by pro-government media and representatives, but recent media statements from Maistep uh, members uh, confirmed this to be true. Uh, Marutian himself had been a staunch ally of Pashinyan and participated actively in the 2018 Velvet Revolution. But since the 44-day war disaster, Marutian increasingly distanced himself from the party and in the past three months uh, has been not supportive of any candidates in local elections or even the parliamentary elections. He, was, uh, he stayed out of that. In the local elections, the ruling party achieved spotted success. The uh, civil contract party uh, initiated proceedings in order to impeach him and successfully did so uh, this week. Uh, the, the, there were a few arguments, but mostly around efficiency and, I mean, things that at least those in the opposition have been talking about for many years now. Let's go to the facts, uh, Tevan. What is Haik Marutian's real record as mayor of Yerevan? You know, I think the issue is following, first of all. Was this process all about the management of the city? I think it has been just simply to showing to the whole political system that see whatever I wish I can do. 
and try to explain to all his own team that even if I can uh, change any mayors, and this, it's it's all about has been local government issues. It has been all about uh, some other issues than about Yerevan. And uh, I think on that regard, even if there are some positive and changes, uh, maybe not major but minor, that we can see the how uh, how Haik Marutian has been good for maybe this big block community places, like elevators changes, some transportation issues, uh, cleaning and so on, other issues. I think yes, uh, this was the just a nice case because in the Avakani of Yerevan, they have the biggest majority. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine similar situation, but for example, majority is not so strong in the Avakani for any city. Would Pashinyan be able to do that like this? That, uh, the no. Avagani is the Council of Elders of Yerevan. Yes, I think they have uh, 45 out of 65 members on that council. That's why I'm saying that. Yes, they, they, they have, let's say, so-called constitutional majority. Now, in all other places, whenever he don't have, doesn't matter if the guys even from their party, if he would uh, betray the party, would leave the party, in sense, would they be able to do it? This right. is all about the point when he was able to do the process, trying to utilize it for some other issues. Because he perfectly knows that the Yerevan today is much more oppositional than anything place. And this was all that uh, point. And I don't believe that uh, it has been about democracy. It has been about uh, good management. It, it has been just simply about the showing the power Asserting power, essentially. Showing who yes. is boss. Yes, this was all about the, the these issues, trying to say that until I'm able uh, to show that I, I'm sh really showing now, this was a nice opportunity to keep the whole Yerevan uh, busy with one week and yeah. having a lot of other issues agreed to at least have a press conference of 24. Yeah, I've been wondering whether we're going to see Marutian join some form of opposition, form his own opposition, or simply be a move to another position in the government, because the circle of very trusted friends around Pashinyan has been has been tightening, right? He has fewer and fe fewer people that he can trust, and so it seems like almost musical chairs uh, between the positions and the friends of Pashinyan. Yes, starting from May 2018, in the close meetings or even in the open, um, my interviews, I've been so many times saying that I don't like to use war or word revolution, but much more change or transformation. Yeah. Because revolution has three phenomena. And one of them is that uh, doesn't matter who plan it, doesn't matter who fulfill it, the beneficiaries always are the bad guys. Now, uh, we need to be afraid of these points. And I think it doesn't matter. There is also another uh, rule of revolution. Revolution is killing its own kids, or uh, revolution is eating its own heroes. Now, that circle would be getting uh, smaller, uh, but there would be people who would be under some various other political pressures. Uh, if they are weak, they would give up. And then there will be a circle of the ones who are able, uh, would be much more uh, listening to Parashinyan's all demands and fulfilling it, uh, the point. And I think uh, one of the positive stuff for him that if we have in the local council from his own party four or five guys who also resign with uh, Marukan, he even cleaned it up. But now he has a full, fully controlled team in the local councils of Yerevan. Right. And I think much more he would be utilizing from this uh, point of view. But what would be the Marukian doing? I think uh, he, 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 he's not the one for whom many oppositional parties would be chasing to get him. Yeah. 
say like even in the point when Arman Tatrian is left the office, I do believe that there will be a very long line of uh, political parties trying to get him uh, on his border. Yeah, Markham is not that, that kind of a guy. And that's why I don't know. Maybe he would decide that uh, he would initiate his own party or his own movement, or uh, maybe he wouldn't be even going with this and will go and deal with his business activities. He's uh, kind of a, a self made person on the point of view that financially he's a strong person. Uh, he has also opportunities to move to other country to live and so on. But uh, I think the uh, issue uh, wouldn't be the point that someone would try to utilize him on the political field. I yeah. less believe in that. Then there'll be another guys for whom the political parties definitely would chase. And it seems like the government has opened a criminal investigation against him as well. So which we've seen uh, as a pattern used by the government to try to keep people in check. No, I, I will not be amazed if uh, next day uh, the similar approach would be against me, you, or even aspect of being instilled in the United States. That's why uh, yeah, th- this is a process. It's like it's repression system whenever it's coming, when you need to yeah. keep the power. And... Uh, we have so many uh, cases, criminal cases open. Like uh, just uh, recently, there was an information that a uh, member of the parliament sent a letter to ask the uh, uh, police about how many people uh, has uh, the situation when they are not able to leave the country, like due to the, some criminal cases. 13,000 people in the sect system, sign are blocked uh, from uh, leaving term. Yes, uh, so, so like, can you imagine uh, what, what this means? Yes, uh, that's why uh, it, it's also natural, and that it has been very predictable that after the lose, if, if the ruling party would be there just to keep uh, the power, uh, repression would be one of the directions over which uh, it would be using. Now, I don't know, and see, so like rule uh, our institutions of rule of law be it investigative institutions uh, checking police uh, prosecutor office courts are so many many times uh, lost the real image that there is no any trust of uh, is it true or not even if there are the real case of criminals i do believe that majority of the people would not believe to this or the other people who believe in everything they would be just believing without opening up the case. Uh, that's why we, we, yeah. we're living in a bit different uh, reality than uh, th- 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 this was a really predictable yeah. situation. What can you tell us about uh, Haik Marutian's replacement, Racha Sarkisan, the new mayor? Nothing. The only thing that I've learned, uh, it has been in the news from the guy with this new party or previous uh, minister of social affairs who put the harsh criticism on him saying that uh, he has supported that guy for growing up and he has been very very critical about that part Uh, i don't know him personally and i never uh, heard about something else uh, on the very important point that's why i don't know to say that Nothing positive, nothing negative. I don't know really that person. But the life will show uh, in a few, uh, one month, two months, uh, yeah. after the few uh, sessions of local councils, we'll see how he's managing, how he's behaving, or whatever he's doing, whatever he's saying, uh, what, whatever actions is taking place. And uh, the management of the city would uh, be really... Uh, field, uh, I don't know, the uh, first no or uh, after his appointment could be one of the lacmus uh, situation. Uh, yeah. for first, some small uh, crisis in the city management would be the case. Maybe uh, we all said that, wow, uh, thank you uh, for this appointment. Maybe we will say everything in advance versus. So let the light will show. But that, I really don't know.
let me put it this way. Do you think it's a temporary uh, solution or uh, this is the long-term candidate for uh, my step? Because one of the reasons also that the El- Council of Elders uh, impeached him is for him leaving the civil contract party. Yet, Hadacha Sarkisan himself is not a member of the civil contract. And he promised, and he promised not to be not to join. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That, 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 that's why I'm saying that it's a, uh, it's, it's uh, they are confronting is with each other on many issues. So like this, there's no value uh, in all these discussions. Like they, they're raising no they're isms. Raising one, uh, yes, they're raising argument why they taking out the previous guys, but the one who is coming in Kubernetes one saying that I'm not even accepting it. But they are ready to to put this as an end. Uh, you know, like uh, in all cases, is temporarily to the point that in 2023 there is an election. Like it would be one year or something uh, mm-hmm. like this. Uh, even if they would keep him till the appointment, what would be the process of changing or not changing? And I think situation with him would be not because of the dead person how his management skills would be. But at the point of the election, whenever these days would come, what would be the image of the ruling party and uh, how would be the situation on the way? In Yerevan, we definitely having uh, many times the political elections, no, not like uh, in small uh, communities and so on. Yeah. That's why... Uh, I don't think that anything depends from this uh, mayor on a way how would be the results for the next elections. How closely was the government would be working? <laughs> this is, uh, again, the point of the value system. So like, yeah. Local government, local government should have its own independence. And that's why they call it local government. And according to our law, they should be independent from the yes. central government. Now, what is this image that we need to work closely? Should, do, do, does this remaining that if in other communities we don't have the leaders from the today ruling party, that uh, government is not working closely with these communities. Yeah. It, this is the whole system. This message is one of the painful to listen about the state development. Decentralization should be always promotional point in the way of running the state. Are we talking about statehoodness or are we talking about kinship? If it's yeah. kinship system, then guys, what are we discussing? Uh, one day they would please each other, they would stay in us and they know. But uh, is it uh, destiny of state students or destiny of nation is dependent on that? This is issue to the whole uh, population to understand whenever they would come in next time for election, what they are electing. Are they based on the values? Are they based for the national dreams? Or this is just the personality issues because today I have a position, today I have a salary, and I'm not caring about all of the issues. And I think the, this, the, this is the crisis. It's a psychological crisis. It's the value psychological crisis, which is with transforming. And unfortunately, believe me, last December, we have been with a much higher expectations, hopes than we passing this December. Okay. This is one of the deepest crises that we have, and I don't uh, see that uh, solutions would come soon. But in any way, I'm wishing that 2022 would be a bit uh, better year than 2021. Yeah, that's that's a good wish to close on, and uh, we wish you the same, Tevan. Thank you for being with us this year. Uh, we hope to have you on our show many times following year as well. Yeah. Hope to see each other uh, next year, and I hope that uh, more and more times we would be meeting each other in Arsa. Indeed, All right. that would be wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Bye, Tevan. Have a good New Year. Bye, 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 Aspet. Bye, Hobi.
And that concludes our program for this episode of Groom Weekend Review. We hope it has helped your understanding of some of the issues from this previous week. We look forward to your feedback and suggestions for issues to cover in greater depth. Contact us on our website at groom.org, that's G-R-O-O-N-G, and on our Facebook page, ann groom or in our Facebook group, groom armenian News Network. Special thanks to Laura Osborne for providing the music for our podcast. I'm Hovik Manacharyan, and on behalf of everyone in this episode, I wish you a good week. Thank you for listening, and talk to you next week.